Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. Thank you so much for clicking on the video. Today we are breaking down one of the best Mystic Spear Hand builds in Dragon's Dogma 2, which includes the best weapons, gear, augments, and skills to use. This vocation combines quick melee attacks with powerful magic abilities to help you control the fight, deal damage from afar, and destroy anything that gets close to you with your signature duo spear. Mastering this vocation involves understanding the flow of combat and knowing when and where to play aggressive or go on the defensive. The Mystic Spear Hand, like all other classes, has a number of different abilities for you to choose from as you increase your vocation rank, and in today's video, we'll break down which skills are the best and how to best utilize them during combat. Some of these skills include Mirror Vesture, which makes you completely immune to damage and prevents you from being staggered for a short period of time, and Dragoon's Foin, which is a powerful lunge attack that can close gaps and kill flying enemies very easily. This vocation blends offense and defense into a single formidable class and is highly effective against every single enemy in the game. To unlock the Mystic Spearhand vocation, you need to progress several hours into the main story. After completing the monster culling for Captain Brant, you'll eventually make your return to Melv and discover that the village is being attacked by a dragon. After finishing the fight, look for a hooded NPC nearby by the name of Sigurd. He'll inform you that he was impressed by your skills and will offer you his teachings, which unlocks the Mystic Spearhand vocation. The Mystic Spearhand's basic skills provide a solid foundation to help you control the flow of combat. Twine Cut is your main attack, and you'll find yourself using this basic skill a lot during almost every engagement since it provides quick and controlled melee attacks, and once upgraded to Winding Cut, can be spammed repeatedly and unleashes a rapid flurry of slashes with the Duo Spear without using any stamina at all. Magic Cut is a powerful magic slash that's capable of knocking enemies off balance, which lets you follow up with a powerful successive strike. It can also hit enemies from range, which can be very useful when you're fighting flying enemies. Reduted Bolt, I think I'm saying that correctly, is also an incredible skill that doesn't deal damage, but instead it makes targets flinch, opening up more opportunities for you to attack and even continue your combos. Your core skills are enhanced versions of your basic skills and provide additional ways to defeat your enemies. Scattering Bolt disperses Forbidding Bolt after it has been released, trapping nearby enemy hostiles, and immobilizing them. Quickfot enables the user to instantly close the distance to a target struck by Forbidding or Scattering Bolt. For Rain Bolt extends the range of Reduted Bolt, and Winding Cut initiates a forward spinning attack with the Duo Spear, swiftly slashing through targets without any interruption whatsoever. Next, let's talk about the best weapon skills for the Mystic Spear Hand Vocation, starting with Dragoon's Foin, which is an advanced form of Dragoon's Stab that allows you to travel farther, deal more damage, and inflict magic damage as well. This powerful lunge is useful for many things, including closing gaps between you and your enemies, targeting flying enemies most importantly, but also traversing around the map to help you travel longer distances and even explore areas you might have not been able to reach before. The Wild Fury ability allows you to charge forward and unleash a barrage of attacks and a magic clone that attacks with you simultaneously. What's great about this skill is you can continuously perform this skill to help you destroy all enemies around you, but the most important thing to remember is to always pay attention to your stamina bar so you don't lose control and leave yourself vulnerable. Wild Fury is a perfect skill for eliminating small groups of enemies and single target damage for larger bosses. Mirror Shelled is undoubtedly the best defensive skill in the entire game. When activated, this skill forms a protective shield around you and your allies for 10 seconds and completely negates all forms of damage. You also can't be staggered and your attacks will not be interrupted, making this an incredibly useful skill to help you complete combos and even deal extra damage to enemy weak points. This skill honestly lays the foundation for this build and should always be active before attacking your foes. After some practice, you'll find it easy to seamlessly blend your shield and attacks. For my last skill slot, I like to use several different options depending on the situation that I'm in. I find myself using Ravenor's Hand the most simply because stamina is so important during difficult boss fights. 
This skill lets you drain an enemy's vitality and grants it back to you in the form of stamina, which is incredibly useful during difficult boss fights where you need extra stamina for your weapon skills to destroy enemy weak points when the boss is vulnerable. I like to use this skill to fully charge my stamina bar whenever I need to unleash Wild Fury for extra crowd control. I also like to use Sky Dragoon's Fest. I think I'm saying it correctly. This skill lets you dart swiftly into the air before plunging down at a high speed, inflicting even more damage if you manage to evade the enemy's attack right before. This skill also makes it incredibly easy for you to cling on to enemies and get on top of them if you need to. You can also use Magic Sparagon, which fires all of the magic stored within the Duo Spear in a high speed blast. Now this skill consumes stamina while readying your Duo Spear, but it increases your damage relative to the amount of stamina consumed, which means the longer you charge it, the more damage it will do. Now this is easily one of the hardest hitting skills for the Mystic Spear Hand, if timed correctly, and can be very lethal against bosses that are staggered or vulnerable. For augments, I'm using Polarity, which augments your strength during the day and your magic during the night. I also have Athleticism, which reduces stamina cost when dashing. Subtlety, which reduces the likelihood of being targeted by foes. Gratification, which slightly restores health when dealing a killing blow to enemies. Vigor, which reduces stamina cost when clinging to foes. And lastly, Verve, which augments your strength, giving you even more damage. Dominance from the Warrior class would also be a really good choice since it increases your knockdown power, making you more lethal against bosses. And you also have Exaltation from the Mage Vocation, which is a great choice because it boosts your stamina recovery speed, allowing you to be more efficient during combat. For weapon choices, you have several options, starting with the Dead Ringer Duo Spear. Now this weapon is obtained after you kill the Lesser Dragon in the Dragon's Breath Tower with Sigurd. Since this weapon requires you to progress far into the game, it may take some time to obtain, but it's well worth it thanks to its high strength and knockdown power. Easily one of the best duo spears to use during your second playthrough. The Ruined Duo Spear is also a great option thanks to its 50% ice elemental buildup and very high base damage. This duo spear can only be purchased from vendors after you complete the game and enter New Game Plus, but it's a great weapon to add to your arsenal during your second playthrough. You also have the Wings Asunder Duo Spear that can be purchased from the weapons vendor in Bakbatal. You can get this Duo Spear relatively early, just as long as you head straight to Bakbatal when your journey begins. The strongest and most powerful Duo Spear in the game right now is the Linworm Fang. This powerful Duo Spear can only be purchased with Worm's Life Crystals at the Dragon Forged NPC located at the Bay Wayside Shrine. It is only available for purchase in New Game Plus, which means you will need to complete the game first before you can use it. The reason this Duo Spear is so powerful is because it increases your base damage as you continuously attack without taking damage which is made incredibly easy thanks to your mirror shield, which makes you vulnerable for 10 seconds. For the armor, I'm using the Confidant's Hood, the Soaring Surcoat, and the Wrath Greaves. All of this gear is purchasable from the vendors in New Game Plus and is easily the coolest looking gear for the Mystic Spear Hand. Now your armor choices are going to depend on your preferred equipment load. I always try to stay within a lighter equipment load just because you recover stamina quicker during combat and have way easier stamina control overall. And for the rings, I'm using the Ring of Momentum, which moderately boosts maximum stamina, and the Ring of Aggression, which boosts your base damage. Damage. You could also try using the Ring of Precipients to help boost your magic damage, or even the Ring of Vehemence which increases your stagger and knockdown power against foes. For Pawn Synergy, you always want to make sure you have three things. A tank on the team to pull aggro and open up more attacking opportunities for you, a support pawn to provide buffs and healing for your party, and a pawn that specializes in ranged attacks and abilities. For example, I made my main pawn a fighter so he can support the team by grabbing the enemy's attention and stay alive thanks to some of the fighter's defensive capabilities. Equipping your fighter with skills like Shield Drum, Flawless Guard, Divine Defense, and even Burst Strike will provide them with the necessary tools to support the team and make it easier for you to attack your targets. A mage is also a great vocation to have in your group because they offer powerful support spells for your character. Some examples of this includes Fire Affinity, which coats your weapon in flames, Lightning Affinity, which applies lightning damage to your weapon, Celerity, which boosts movement speed and attack speed, 
and Palladium, which increases your entire party's survivability. I also recommend adding a pawn that specializes in ranged attacks like the Archer or even the Sorcerer. These vocations will help you continuously apply pressure to flying enemies or enemies that are difficult to hit. This party composition provides everything you need for battle. A fighter to tank damage, a mage for team buffs and healing, and an archer or sorcerer for ranged attacks. This concludes the ultimate build guide for the Mystic Spear Hand in Dragon's Dogma 2. Thank you so much for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. If you missed my last video, I broke down one of the best thief builds in the game, and I highly recommend checking that out. I'll put a link at the top of the screen right now if you're interested. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more Dragon's Dogma 2 build guides coming soon, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more.